Welcome back and another extension of the template series which is going to be the non-template templates. Now these are whole designs that I use on a number of courses that you may have spotted that aren't really templates but things that I've kind of made signatures and whole designs I really like. They're sometimes quite simple and we're going to go through why they work as well as where you might have seen them before and little twists you could put on them. We're going to start today with the angled path 3 which is something that comes up on pretty close to every single one of my courses. So the inspiration for this whole design has come from a couple of places and two holes in particular. The first being Shankin Bay in China, um, which is a, a little known core and Crenshaw course that is just absolutely stunning. I came across when researching for Kayuma Bay and I particularly liked about this one, the diagonal nature of the green and the way it kind of feeds behind uh, over here and you could potentially tuck a pin and there's also you'll see this little spine here that I thought was really cool and we'll look at how we use that later. Um, the second one then that was used was this 11th hole at Castle Stewart's which is another that looks kind of similar overlooking water you can see the staggered nature of the two bunkers and again kind of really rewarding a certain shot shape so in this case a fade and turning the ball and that's really the main essence of of this whole design it's can you hit a certain shape of shot and trying to angle the green so that it rewards that whilst also kind of it, it works particularly well i find when overlooking a water body as well just because you get that real negative space in the background that works nicely so the first one we're going to look at is the seventh at akashi shore and it's the first time you meet the big riverbed and you want to have a hole there that's equal to the setting as well and I'm going to tell you the way that the players would walk because I think this was a really nice reveal that I liked. So you'd come up, go around, back of here, get to the crowds, and then you open up and there you are overlooking that awesome par three. The bunkering's really striking. You can see the angle of the green as well, as well as that little funnel slope in the middle of it as well. Now, in terms of the green slopes themselves as you can see we've got that spine coming through so there's a little bit of that one we saw at Shankin Bay but there's a bit of a twist because you've got this high plateau here then you've got this front area which you'll see on a number of the par threes that I build there's, and if you're really going after the pins over on this side you're going to have to take on that little spine which is something you'll see on a number of these holes because it's quite a subtle design as well um, and the other thing if we go up into the air a little bit you'll see that the green slightly tapers off in width so the further you are carrying this bunker to try to get close to a tucked pin at the back the shorter and more precise you have to be whereas a good play for this one's generally towards the heart of the green but again that slope coming in means you could end up at the front with a slightly trickier part it's not the hardest of holes to make a par on certainly but equally it's not that easy to get close for birdie and if you're a touch aggressive there's a fall off behind it, which means that you're facing a chip up. And again, not the most difficult, this, this ended up playing on CC, but there's enough there to make you think without being crazy. And it does prompt a very different shot value, namely Ken. Another prototypical version of this hole would be the 12 at Wazazat, my national treasure entry from last year. Now this one being sort of sandbelt inspired has that classic style of bunkering and you can see more the castle stewart style here where you've got the bunker short and the one out to the right as well um, again it sits on that water body and you're not really bringing the water into play but it's a great backdrop for this sort of hole and as you can see it clearly rewards a fade um, although in a slightly different way the green is less angled but the slopes make it play that you're going to have to work the ball away from the slope to really hold the higher shelf Again, though, the, this one has that front funnel section, which creates a kind of easier pin. And to this pin that you've got here, pin one, you've got this big spine in the middle that can just redirect most balls. Hit over this bit, will funnel down towards this pin. There's a pin here as well, which is very accessible, but you will want to channel, challenge this front bunker to get there. The one here, you're kind of playing between the two. And then the one back here is definitely the toughest. It's the longest, and you want to be landing it just on that spot ideally with a touch of fade and that will keep it there um, it's a bigger green than the others so if we have a little look from pro from the side profile you'll see how long it is and that allows you to hit those longer shots in now in terms of an ideal length for this hole anything that's like a mid to long iron works really really well you want a bit of depth so that you can make it play differently to different pins um, but there's no real hard and fast rule i would say probably not a wedge shot because um, it's too easy just to stick the ball where it lands and the angle and the fade therefore matters a little less.
So quickly looking at a couple of other iterations, and this is a hole that can really be very challenging. We're now looking at the third at Barton Hills, and not the real course. Um, and this one is about as tough as a par three can get, I would say, because the green goes hard from right to left, whilst the angle fights that because the slope is carrying you away from where you ideally want to be going. So a fade is a must. It's quite easy to leave the ball below the hole, but then again, you can't go too far or you're facing that runoff. So it's really challenging. And the place you absolutely don't want to be would be in one of these two bunkers where you're then facing that splash shot back up. So it's a simple par three design, but one that can really be maximized if you want to make things difficult. You'll also see this runoff just towards the back. Again, we talked about that idea of the more you challenge the back pins, the narrower it gets. That's a key concept with this one. I wouldn't recommend building a hole like this. It's for a very specific set of circumstances, potentially to host a major, but yeah. Now 16 at Sapelo River is a slightly different version in the, first of all, it's longer. So 220 is probably the max I'd go for this. The reason I wouldn't go more than this, well, for the back pins, if you're saying to people, you've got to carry this hazard, you want them to be able to stop it. So if you are going long, you want a big kind of back to front slope to help. Now, the other thing you might want to do and consider doing as we've got on this hole is four back pins, allow them another way to get to the hole. So if you're going to land in here, have we got some sort of slope that's going to gently work the ball down this way? And that should work with the land generally. So we've got this bunker, the whole green works across this way, albeit gently. But in this case, we're still trying to reward that draw. So if people can play a draw and come in this way, well, the green's going to shuffle them closer towards this pin. And that will make life a little bit easier. Now, given the length of this hole, we want to make that one a bit more interesting to these sorts of pins and thinking about where are we going to land it to get it close. So this one, you can be landing it through here, but you'll leave, if you want to go on the direct line to a pin, you've got a bunker that you've got to be challenging there. Um, towards a back pin, it's really just hit a, long, a wood or a hybrid into the heart of the green. And you're usually fine. But that's another way. And you'll notice this one's a draw shot because we want something a little bit different. But again, the overlooking a body of water tends to be my favourite place to put these holes. So that's really it. It's quite a simple hole design that really only asks one question, which is, can you work the ball? Can you work the ball in a specific direction? But there's enough subtlety on the greens that mean that you've got other things to think about depending on where the pin is. More than anything, I find that this sort of hole design can really inject strategy into par threes, which are often really difficult to make strategic. It requires one very specific shot shape, and it's asking one pretty specific question, albeit with a couple of different challenges depending on each hole. Um, it's something that therefore I've used on a ton of courses because par threes have to have something that makes them in play interesting as well as look great. Um, with a big shout out to Jamie for his shout out to Jamie for his visual work on this one. Hopefully that's been useful and see you again soon.